Hi everyone, I'm Jenna and I'll be doing this week's presentation on uh, the first episode of Unorthodox and the podcast by Fader about Jewish doubt in the digital age. Um, I'm going to start with the podcast. Um, super interesting, honestly. I, pretty, I enjoyed it. Um, her main focus was talking about um, how life-changing doubt um, is an important part of religion and that um, it should be focused on sometimes rather than always focusing on faith, which I thought was an interesting um, point of view. So specifically in the ultra-Orthodox community, she was talking about um, members who lived like a double life, basically. Um, some interesting points I remember were was that she was saying how mostly it was males who tended to end up um, doing this and that had almost a direct correlation to the fact that um, they had more access to uh, the internet than their wives did or female um, members in the community. Um, so her main argu argument um, was saying that it was um, this digital age that was causing um, these double lives and something that was like strongly believed in the community as well was that um, the electronics and um, the internet were negatively affecting um, just the community as a whole and um, upkeeping religious values. Um, the blogs, that was one thing that she focused a lot of her time on as well. Um, she said that it created an opportunity, a space where people could question things in the religion. Um, and then it kind of strengthened and gained momentum in doing this um, through the internet. Um, one super interesting thing I remember her saying was that someone had paralleled the internet to the Holocaust, um, saying that the Holocaust burned our bodies, but the internet has burned our soul. And I was like, super taken aback, like pretty um, forward and strong comment. Um, but just like an interesting outlook to think about and that's how like strongly this like ultra orthodox community thought of towards the internet and how um, dangerous it could possibly be. Um, something relevant in our specific time right now with um, just COVID-19 and the crisis going on um, for this community is Zoom um, and having to have lessons over Zoom and like whether or not that is um, kind of breaking their beliefs and or like almost exposing themselves to this possible um, potential to for them to be like swayed or like taken away from their belief almost in a way um, and like having to overcome that because like what else can you do um, it's like you have almost to find a common ground between like wanting to further your religious education um, and then getting on the internet. So I don't know, just I'm wondering how that's gonna play out and how that is playing out currently right now. Um, so if anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd be super interested to hear about it. Um, moving on to the first episode of Unorthodox, which was also super interesting. I'll probably end up watching the rest of the series because it was just like super intriguing, but um, kind of just to tie it to it. So. Esty is the character that we follow in the show, um, and the first episode is kind of, is just showing the day that in which she ran away from the community, um, which was kind of a really cool outlook, but I wanted to tie um, the double life narrative and idea to her situation, and although she's not a male, I felt like um, this kind of showed uh, that in real time. Um, the fact that she like had hidden um, like the music notes, uh, music sheets under her bed. Um, the fact that she was taking piano lessons um, with the woman that actually ended up helping her escape. Um, the fact that she was hiding like certain personal items um, throughout her room and like, and then um, uh, oh, what was the other one? Shoot. Oh, um, she mentioned to her husband um, 
before they were married, she said, like, I'm different. Um, which I thought was interesting because she already, she already sort of saw herself as different than um, other ultra-orthodox ultra -orthodox members. Um, also, the community, like, called her an orphan, even though she was an orphan, and that had to do with her mother um, kind of separating herself from the community, I thought, as well. So there's already these, like, certain hints um, that I think could be evidence to show that she was um, living a double life before, obviously, she ran away, in which no longer a double life. She was just wanting to remove herself from the situation. Um, but other than that, I think that's about all I wanted to cover. So if anyone has any other comments, I'm excited to read what you guys thought. Oh, there was one thing that I found super interesting that I didn't have any other knowledge about um, from the show, and it was the fact that it seemed like the married women um, in the community wore wigs. And um, we see later because she, she takes off her wig and then we see her shaved head. Um, whereas before she had run away, we see that she like has pretty like long hair. And so I wonder if that's like a sort of um, like, I don't know, rite of passage um, once you become married and having to do that. I wonder, I don't know. So that is a question that I have. If any of you guys have any knowledge, I would love to hear about it. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed.